Hi, welcome to this video uh, talking about Azure Backup and how to perform a first full backup using a disk transfer method. My name is Aidan Finn. I'm a Microsoft Valuable Professional with the Cloud and Data Center and Management Expertise. I'm also the Technical Sales Lead at an Irish technology distributor called Micro Warehouse. We distribute or wholesale Microsoft technologies and other technologies such as data on storage for storage spaces around Ireland and the European Union. I blog on aidenfin.com and I also am the contributing editor in Microsoft Virtualization for the Petri IT Knowledge Base on Petri.com. I've written a number of books over the years, particularly around the private cloud stuff such as Hyper-V and System Center, and I tweet as at Joe underscore Elway. In this video, I want to talk about how we can solve one of the challenges of performing the first full backup in an online backup scenario. If we consider a customer who has uh, a good bit of data on premises, if they're backing up to the cloud, one of the biggest concerns we have is bandwidth. Now, there's two impacts of that bandwidth. The first is the first full backup, and then there's the incremental backups. When we're doing the first backup, we need a lot of bandwidth potentially, and then after that, we just need enough bandwidth to be able to do the incrementals, the changes only. So the first full backup, if we don't have that much data, doing that over the wire across the internet, that's not a big deal. Azure Backup gives us a solution for this in the form of offline seeding, also known as online or offline backup or disk transfer. If we have a lot of data, we can perform that first full backup to a drive. That drive is encrypted using BitLocker, and then we can courier that drive to Microsoft. And they will transfer our data into our backup vault in Azure. The seeding process is actually under the covers, a lot of it is going on. Uh, as far as we're concerned, it's fairly simple to use and deploy and, and take advantage of, especially with recent changes by Microsoft. When we create that first backup, instead of doing the normal default online backup option across the internet, we select an offline backup option. We put in some information as to configure the offline backup Java. The backup is going to be done to a local volume somewhere on the customer site. So that could be a file share, it could be another drive on the same machine. And then we connect a disk to that machine, and I'll get back to how we connect that disk in a moment. The drive is then prepared, so it's encrypted using BitLocker, it's formatted with NTFS, and the data is copied onto that disk. An import job is created in the storage account in Azure, and then we enter in some details to complete the shipping of that disk, and we send off our disk via courier. Now the disk is safe because it is encrypted using BitLocker, so we don't have to worry about data protection laws if the disk is lost. Microsoft then take that disk and they import the data into a, that storage account for us. The data is then automatically moved from the storage account to our backup vault by Azure Backup. Azure Backup is expecting the data to appear in the storage account. And at that point, our on-premise backups start doing incremental backups to the cloud. And that's automatic as well because Azure Backup is orchestrating the entire process. So a lot of things are happening behind the scenes but we're actually only involved in a few of those steps. And they're fairly easy to, to do, so I'll show you in a few minutes. There's three different solutions from Azure Backup, and they each support this scenario. So we have the simple Mars agent, we have the free to download uh, Microsoft Azure Backup server, which is like DPM, except we don't have tape support and we don't get the regular cumulative updates, but we're able to back up our Hyper-V, our SQL Server, our SharePoint, and our Exchange uh, on-prem to local disk, and then forward that data to the cloud which we also get with the full-blown System Center Data Protection Manager. And note that if you are using Azure Backup Server or Data Protection Manager, you can actually backup from multiple sources, so such as Hyper-V and SharePoint and SQL Server, and use those different sources in one disk import process. So we can have a big backup of all of our stuff and put all that data onto one or more disks and send them off to Microsoft. There are a few requirements for doing this solution. First thing is you're going to need some career accounts. You're going to need a career account to send your stuff to Microsoft. And you can actually use any courier to send your disks to Microsoft. But to get your disks back, you'll need either a FedEx account in the EU or the US or DHL elsewhere, such as Asia, to get your disks back. And you'll need to share the, the, your account details with those couriers with Microsoft at the end of the process. The disks that you use must be naked three and a half inch SATA 2 or SATA 3 disks. So no caddies. 
No discs that are inside some, some plastic case. They have to be naked exposed discs and sent to Microsoft as naked exposed discs. They're going to be formatted with NTFS during this process, so you don't have to worry about that. You can have up to 10 drives per job. And with each drive being up to 10 terabytes in size, that means you can ship up to 100 terabytes of backup data. And remember, that's your backup data. It's compressed. So that's, you know, it's got to be smaller than your original data in the first place. You need some means to connect your physical disks to your machine that you're uh, going to be doing this drive preparation process with. And you're going to need an Azure subscription. In there, you're going to need an Azure Packet Vault or a Recovery Services Vault. If you're using ARM, it's a bit more complicated. Um, at the moment, only ASM storage counts support disk imports. If you're using an ARM subscription, there is a solution where you can hop via an ASM storage account and use a blob copy process to get your data into an ARM storage account. And finally, you're going to need your Azure published settings file. So this is a file that describes your Azure subscription. So the disk import process is able to tell what subscription you're using. I mentioned that you're going to need some hardware to connect your disks. So this is a fairly affordable device that we're talking about. This is a means that we can take those naked three and a half inch disks and connect them to our server. Microsoft recommends four different devices. I found that they do have limited distribution and some of them are no longer in manufacturing. But if you shop around on eBay or Amazon or some of those sites, you're going to be able to get those devices, no problem. I've actually got the USB 2 one um, by StarTech and that works well. And Microsoft do say you can use other types of devices to connect your three and a half inch disks to your PC or your server where you've done that local backup to. However, you need to make sure that the device is going to work with the Azure Drive preparation tool. I've seen a newer StarTech device, for example, fail to work with the Drive preparation tool because it wasn't revealing all of the firmware information from the disks to the Drive preparation tool. On the other hand, I've seen some uh, hardware work with the Drive preparation tool, but by the time the disk got to Microsoft, they were not able to read the data that they ex in the way that they expected to be able to read it. So my advice is shop around and get one of the recommended devices. Keep it simple. If you're a Microsoft partner, this isn't a huge spend and you're going to be reusing that same device over and over. The backup agent needs to be, well, should always be the latest version of the backup agent. So if you're using Mars or if you're using Azure Backup Server or the Data Protection Manager, uh, make sure you download the latest version of that Microsoft Azure Recovery Services agent. Microsoft changed how offline backup works in August 2016. So they heard feedback from customers and they changed the process. They made it simpler. They included the drive preparation tool. And you don't have to enter in the same pieces of information over and over. You're going to see this in action and you'll see how simple it is to do the process. I have created some stuff already. So I have a storage account. And in my storage account, I created a container. We need a container to send our backups to. I've also downloaded a published settings file. So I went to manage.windowsazure.com slash publish settings and I downloaded a file. And that file is stored on my laptop. And there's my published settings file. Next, we are going to create a backup job. So I have the Microsoft Azure Recovery Services Agent or Mars Agent installed on my service book. I'm gonna click Schedule Backup. And we're gonna back up some files. So I'm gonna select this folder that has my stuff that I want to protect using Azure Backup. If I want, I can click Exclusion Settings to block out certain files, file types, or folders. I'm going to do my regular backup at 1.30 every morning. If I want, I can add in other times of the day, or I can go for a more complex schedule by selecting week. I can keep up to 9,999 recovery points for up to 99 years. I'm going to stick with the default, so I have staggered recovery points or retention for up to 10 years. And here's the screen that's most interesting to us. This is where we configure our first full backup. By default, it's going to go over the wire, across the internet. And if I don't have enough bandwidth for my first full backup, I can actually go with the offline backup method. And this allows me to send my data or backup or do my first backup to a file share locally on my network or to a local volume or folder on my PC or my server. And then I can use that, that data to place it onto a disk that I send off to Microsoft. 
So my staging location is on my C drive. So I'll browse the C, and there is my staging location. I'm gonna select my published settings file. I am going to name my job, get my storage account details, put in the name of my storage account, and then get the name of my container, which is called Azure Backup. Next and finish. That will create my first scheduled backup. I'm doing the offline process, so I don't want to sit here until half one in the morning to get this going. Maybe I do if I have a lot of data and I want to minimize impact to my production environment. But I don't, I'm not going to impact my production environment too much, so I'm going to click backup now and I'm going to trigger that first full backup to happen right now. by the magic of video editing, my first backup is complete. If you look at the status, you can see that we're being told that the first full backup actually hasn't completed. We need the disk import to complete before the first full backup is completed. At that point, Azure Backup will automatically switch us over to incremental backups, and then we won't have that huge impact on bandwidth. So I'm gonna close, and we're gonna complete the process. The next step is we need to launch an elevated command prompt and browse to program files, Microsoft Azure recovery services, agent, backslash utils, backslash Azure offline backup disk prep. And I'm gonna run a command, Azure offline backup disk prep.exe with a flag of S colon and the path to my temporary backup location. Let's have a look at our temporary backup location and we can see we have a new backup job there. And here are the contents of our backup. We'll run that, and now the drive preparation tool is going to format, is going to ask for my disk, and it's going to confirm that I want to format my disk with NTFS. Now a very complicated command is formatted or created for us and executed. We don't need to know this command. Azure Backup is wrapping up the entire process for us. So the prep import command with some very long parameters is run, and we just have to sit back and wait and watch as the drive is formatted with NTFS and then encrypted using BitLocker. The job is now completed, so the backup blobs have been copied from the disk of my machine onto the external three and a half inch SATA disk. We can see that the blob copy task is completed successfully. We have the name of the storage account and the import job name. We can see the details of where we're sending the data to, so Azure North Europe, which is Dublin. And we have the address of where we need to send the package to via our courier. There's also some other links here so we can track what's going on. I mentioned earlier that the drive is encrypted using BitLocker. If we scroll back up, we can see that we also have a recovery key for BitLocker. The next step is we'll use the link that we're provided to go to the Azure Management Portal and complete the process. We go into our storage account and go to Import Export. And here we can see there is a backup job. We can go into this job, edit the shipping information, so put in my details, and then put in the details of my FedEx or my DHL contract. And then using the details we were provided earlier, I can send my disk or disks off to Microsoft. They will then import the data from those physical disks into my Azure storage account. Azure Backup will transfer the data from the storage account to the backup vault and automatically orchestrate the switch over from full backup to incremental backups on my Mars agent DPM server or Microsoft Azure Backup Server. And that's how we can complete our first backup using Azure Backup via the disk transfer method. Thank you for watching.